understand. All right, folks, the Caribbean Drought and Precipitation Monitoring Network says the entire Caribbean basin should monitor their water supply and adopt uh, conservation measures as the drought situation continues to worsen throughout the region. This morning, we have the president of the National Water Commission, Mr. Mark Barnett. Good morning, sir. Good morning, well, never. Welcome to Smile Jamaica Thank once you. again. Um, tell me what, what's happening right at this minute. Where are we right now? So as it relates to NWC, right now we are seeing some low stream flows coming into our major storage, and that would have resulted in some of the precaution that we would have taken, such as reduce our pressures in the network at night time. So we have started to reduce the flows leaving the treatment plants from about 8.30 on to 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We had a terrible drought, um, and then we had a whole lot of rain, mm -hmm. and we heard that the dam full and all kind of stuff. Um, we, 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 you didn't hear that the dam full? <laughs> the dam did full? Yeah. <laughs> right, so since, since then, right. we've gone what? So yes, you, we did in fact had full storage uh, at the end of the rainy season. Both, mm. both Mona Reservoir and the Hermitage Dam were at full capacity. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, there wasn't much overflow because again, we must remember that in the May-June period when we would have our secondary rain period, we really didn't get any rains. So we did in fact get rains in the October, November period. However, if you're not getting that continuous cycle mm -hmm. as we would have been accustomed to, then the level of recharge of our aquifer and the continuous underground flow that would recharge our streams was not existent. And okay. so at the end of the rain, the other day, um, November, we would have seen our stream start to go down. In fact, even during the rain period, once the rain stopped, the stream flows start to decline immediately. So we would have recognized that there's not a lot of recharge of those streams. But we hear of falls, like, is why this? Which one mm. just completely dried up? I, I think it was... Uh, Somerset Falls. Somerset. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it's it's bad. Yes. So this is all as a consequence of, I'm going to say climate change, right? <laughs> climate, so climate disruptions. Climate disruption. Right. Wow. So you, in fact, last year, St. Mary Portland had experienced one of their worst period. I think St. Mary for both most part of five months experienced drought. St. Mary Portland wouldn't traditionally be our regular high <coughs> sorry, rain receiving parishes and that wasn't the case last year. So this last is year. part of a new pattern that's being mapped? Is it that the rainy periods are not going to be the rainy periods anymore and the periods in which we expect to get rain mm -hmm. um, will be, won't be? So if we look at some of the research that has been done elsewhere, we're not expecting to, to see anything different. What has been happening is the rainy periods are now shifted you'll get a high intensity, short period of rain. So you get a lot of rain in a very short period of time, but our dry periods are getting longer. Ah, and therefore, it is important in a scheme like that that we start to practice serious conservation. Yeah, Mr. Barnett, yeah. when we had the, the we in Kingston yes. here, well, it's me at my house, yes. no, no rain at all. We were hearing that it rained every day in other areas of the country. We got rains in the western side of the island. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say every day, but yeah. there was a regularity of rain, and so they weren't experiencing the same impact as we were in the corporate area and in the eastern part of the island, really. So, yes, last year there was a much improved situation in the western, mm -hmm. western part. I, I, I said that to ask the question about the catchment areas, yeah. if that's what you call them. Yeah. So, so if, if I catch water here, I can't carry over oh, Simone had to make sure she has water. So. And I see where you're going with that, Neville, because yeah. that's something that we have been looking at for, for a, number of, a number of years. So, so let us look at it, what has happened some time ago. So Kingston would not normally has a lot of rainfall or a continuous amount of rainfall. So we would have invested to bring water from St. Catherine, in, right. from the Raya Cobra Basin. And that, that took place some many years ago. And there was also a subsequent investment to move water from the Yalas Hope River Basin bringing water into Kingston. A similar thing has been looked at, but we want to make it be an inclusive approach because, again, we have to look at how we reduce our carbon footprint, albeit that most of the impact of climate change is not as a result of our small island states. In this case, what do you mean by an inclusive? Inclusive meaning we are looking to see how we can do both water and energy as part of a comprehensive project. Renewable. Right, mm -hmm. renewables. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. So if we're having less rain, no water for the dams, the streams dry up, 
-hmm. So it's not like if our water cut off from NWC, we can call up water truck, because mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to get the water eat out. So uh, should we be scared? Are we ac approaching like crisis point, or should yeah. we not be alarmed? You should be concerned. I, I, that's how I put it. And therefore, what we always encourage is that householders need to extra practice extreme conservation measures because it is all well and good to, 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 to rely on the NWC and any other utility that exists providing potable water. But you as an individual need to take some measures to ensure that you're efficiently using the water that you're uh, receiving. You yep. said extreme conservation measures. You need, yes, because one other thing that we recognize in Jamaica, we would preach about conservation, but persons don't necessarily practice it. We have a false sense of protection because we have a storage when we always get the same amount of water because from storage, but we don't necessarily practice some of the things that we should to ensure that even that storage can last us for a longer period. Yeah, we were talking before we came yes. on here about when you start to to do your stuff. So yes. so the Met Service or the region says we have a drought, say in June. Yes. But you start to do a thing from now. Right. You don't wait until June. No, we can't. Right. Uh, because that would then be a, a, a real reactive uh, approach. What we try to do is to pro be proactive. So our effort really is geared towards preserving as much water and storage as is physically possible mm -hmm. and that is a combination of what we would be receiving from our river flows as well as what the consumption pattern would be. Okay. Um, may I change lanes a bit? <laughs> I, I, I said it this morning because yes. I, and I'm certain I heard, well I don't say I'm certain, I think I heard you say mm -hmm. in talking, I can't remember where you were, but you said yeah. that your responsibility with these high-rise buildings only goes up to the second story. Right. So That is so? Yes. And uh, that was always it, so? That has always been so. But again, once developers get their approval, I'm not sure that everybody reads the fine, conditions of those print. approval. <laughs> it's not so much a fine print, mm. it's just about four pages of, um, that we include. So what we, what we have been doing is to ensure that our services mm -hmm. are within a particular pressure range. And you would also be annoyed if every time you drive on a road, you see a lot of leaks. Now, pressure in a pipeline is a function, well, leaks in a pipeline is a function of the pressure that is in the pipe. And so what we have to do is to control our pressures in our distribution network to ensure that we reduce our own losses and at the same time provide you with an adequate amount of pressure. When you go to a certain number of floors, it simply means you would have to now put in a pressurized system on site. That is your cost. You uh, as in the construction. You con as in the developer or right. the, you have those strata arrangement, they would then take over the operations of those systems, yeah. not the NWC. Okay. What, so, uh, but what about wells, sir? So if, uh, when we, it all depends. Are we the one operating the wells or are the, are the, the developers uh, construct and operating a well? Now, as it relates to how water resources are allocated and the WRA would be the one that does that, for NWC operated wells is a different, we go into a national network. For individuals who own an operator well, that's their forte. We don't get involved mm -hmm. in that. Private, private, private issue. arrangement. All right. Yeah. Okay, let me take it back now to where Nev took it from <laughs> yes. and let's talk about these extreme precautions. When do we expect it? You've started already. We have started to take some precautions. Okay, um, what do we expect from the NWC and what do you expect from us? So. What you expect from NWC, we will be doing a reduction in the output pressure from our facilities, and you will start to see the impact of that in your network from about 8.30 at night until okay. 4. That may change depending on how things actually unfold. So if we continue to see declining um, inflows, we are going to take additional measures. I just want to point out one other thing that we have recognized even this month, and in fact, having started... 2020 with a reasonable amount of storage at our Mona Reservoir. Immediately thereafter, we start to see a decline. We would normally be getting 13, 14 million gallons of water coming in from Yalas during that system. We have started to see nine. Mm -hmm. So you have, you have now seen a reduction of about uh, four or five million gallons. So that is what has been happening. And it is really a function, as I said, of how much recharge did we get in those watersheds? Okay, yeah. so, from, so from about 8.30 at night, we'll be impacted. Right. 
Um, some people are saying we're impacted already, so Mark, all day, every day, if we're not getting the water already, it's got worse now. It is not so now as it were last, last year. I, I, I would hasten to say that our situation last year was a little bit compounded because we had a lot of disruption okay. even when our, in our effort to serve. And so we are not having that because most of those major constructions would have been almost completed. Okay. So we're not expecting to get that um, level of disruption. In fact, what we're now doing is the commissioning those new infrastructure into service, which would augur as well for the network. Okay. I think you said cut the pressure, you didn't say lock off. We are, we, we, initially we cut the pressure, but some persons, depending on where they are, they would see no, no water or very low pressure. And that would have started already. And that would have started last uh, thing Thursday. Right. So right. conserve everybody, fill up the water bottle then, fill up Thank the boat, fill, fill up and store. Because you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, as president of the yeah. National Water Commission, Mr. Mark Barnett. All right, more Smile Jamaica when we get back from the break. Some